Okay, in this video, this will be the last for nomenclature, we have naming covalent compounds. So this is different from ionic in a few ways, but first thing we're going to have is prefix. This is important, and I'll go over what the prefixes are in a second. Name, first element. On the left, as it appears on the periodic table. Okay, so the only difference between ionic is these are both nonmetals, but we have prefixes. So on the right, let me let me label that left, right, just so you know, even though it's in the definition. So we have prefix plus um, name of second element. ending in IDE. So, take a second to copy that and then we're going to talk about prefixes. So what do you think of prefixes? Um, prefixes are numbers, but in chemistry there there's a specific way of writing them. So it's denoting how many um, how many elements are in that compound. So we're going to do a little list of 1 through 10. These are the most common. Um, OK, so just so you know, before I even get in there, note, when the first element is 1, You don't write mono. It'll just look silly, so we don't do that. All right, now we're going to do a chart. You're going to need 10 spaces. So I'm going to assume you've copied this. I'm going to go down just a little bit. All right, so um, I guess I have to do lines for all this, so it's so it's even. They're not going to be the same, but it's good enough. Okay, so we're going to need ten numbers. And these I would definitely want you to memorize. They're not hard. So we have mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, um, octa, wow, oh, stupid pen, nona, and deca. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of where you wouldn't use mono in the first one. So say we had CO, this is carbon monoxide because we have one oxygen. We don't write monocarbon monoxide, that's just, it doesn't really sound good. So I want you to try and name these on your paper. And N two O. So pause the video and try and name them. Okay, so I'm gonna assume you're coming back from pausing the video, but if not, just follow along. So we have one carbon. So this is gonna be carbon, and then we have two oxygens. Um, dioxide. 
It's not, I mean, you should already know that just because you've been probably hearing about CO2 since elementary school. That's why I did it. But um, if you follow the logic, this is super easy. It's just different. So let's see. This one, what would this be? You have two nitrogens and four oxygens. So we have dinitrogen tetra oxide. And that's how you would name that one. So let's do blah, blah, blah. And then this one is we have two nitrogens and one oxygen. So you would have dinitrogen monoxide. And that's really how you name covalent compounds. There's not too much to it. It's just counting up your elements using your prefixes and knowing which one goes where. But I mean, it's literally written for you left, right, left, right. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you to figure this out. And that's it for naming and nomenclature. I know it was a lot, but we're going to be practicing this in class like ad nauseum to where you're going to be able to just, you know, answer these without even trying to work anything out. So I'm going to see you in the next video where we talk about um, intermolecular forces and then we'll finish off talking about valence shell um, electron, electron pair repulsion um, theory or Vesper theory. And then that'll do it for this unit. Um, it's not a super long unit, but uh, it's very, very important. So I'll see you in the next video.